So I gave myself a challenge. I challenged myself to um, explain responsive images in less than 10 minutes. Let's see how that goes. I don't know because it can be a very complicated topic, but I try to make it simple and um, yeah, approachable. So I want to talk about uh, how you can use responsive images without going insane with it, with the, all the details that are involved. Uh, so I try to be a bit more pragmatic in this talk. First, shortly about me, my name is Simon Pretorius. Uh, I worked for uh, about 13 years in different agencies. Uh, I actually work with Type 3, so thank you <laughs> for the note before. Um, uh, that's all right. Uh, I'm uh, in the the last years. I mostly did technical leaderships in in bigger projects, bigger type of free projects. Um, so not that much uh, hands on coding. But uh, since June, I I'm an independent. Uh, I'm a freelancer. So I did a bit more coding now. Um, but it it will be always be a mixture between the architecture part and the actual coding, I think. Yeah, and if you uh, need someone like me in your project, you can, of course, hire me. I have to say that. As a so let's dive right in with some basics about uh, images in HTML. You all know this. It's an image tag. We knew this from the beginning of the web. Uh, uh, mostly, uh, as you can see, I used WebP. Uh, this is a bit newer, but yeah, um, it's it's just a file format. So um, if you want to get started with responsive images, you need at least two new attributes for this image tag. Uh, these two attributes are source set and sizes, and I want to quickly explain them uh, to you before we dive a bit deeper into that. So there are two new attributes, as I said, uh, the first one is source uh, source set. And what does source set do? Source set is basically uh, just a list of uh, image files that are the same image content wise, but in different sizes. So it's just linearly scaled. Oh, the pizza is arriving. Perfect, <laughs> perfect timing. Um, so as you can see here, uh, there are four images that, that contain the same image, but are a different size that's just uh, yeah, to, to provide smaller images for smaller devices and bigger images for bigger devices. And um, you might have seen this W there. This is just uh, the unit for the pixels in the image file. This is not to be confused with pixel PX, which is CSS pixels in the browser. So this is the only, um, the only position in the whole HTML I think where you see W, uh, it's the the uh, size of the image file itself. So in this case, you would have uh, uh, four image sizes for for image files that uh, are the same image context wise, but uh, one is one thousand five hundred pixels wide, one is one thousand two hundred pixels wide, one is nine hundred pixels wide, and one is six hundred pixels wide. So this is source set. Uh, sizes is the other attribute we need to know about. Uh, sizes describes how the image um, is actually how how big the image is actually on the page later. Uh, this is needed because uh, at the moment where the browser uh, loads the image file, the CSS might not be already there, so the browser needs to know it in advance which image should be loaded in this case. So uh, in this uh, example. Um, the image would be uh, using the whole viewport if uh, the browser is smaller than a uh, thousand pixels, but if it's bigger than a thousand pixels, the image uh, only uses thousand pixels. So this is important for the browser to know to uh, to determine which image should be loaded in which case. So how is this uh, done by the browser? How does the browser decide which image file uh, should be loaded? Well, there's a, a lot of things that the browser can consider and uh, considers. Uh, firstly, the two um, attributes that I just described to you, but also something like 
the device uh, pixel dense uh, the, the display pixel density. So this is what's uh, called retina or high DPI or 2x. Uh, this is what's uh, this is uh, um, yeah also considered. Also, if an image is already there, this image will be preferred over another image that might be smaller. So it's it's a lot of factors that go into this decision, and in the end. Um, you only um, can can influence this decision by a few parts, but not all of them. So the browser can in fact decide which of these images, which contain the same content but are smaller or bigger, uh, which actually is loaded. So in the end, the browser just says, "I choose uh, 1,200 uh, pixels width, and this is what you have to live with." But which is fine because it's the best, uh, probably the best decision for the user, but uh, you as the developer cannot and should not influence this in this case. So let's look at some use cases. The simplest use case for this whole image optimization thing is probably um, you have an image that is displayed at the same size Regard, uh, regardless of the viewport size. So this is, uh, for example, uh, for example, you would use this for an icon. The icon is just maybe 40 pixels uh, by 40 pixels, regardless if you uh, use it on a mobile phone or if you use it on a big screen. And in this case, it's fine to just use this uh, 2x syntax uh, that you can see here. So in this case, uh, this image is 200 pixels wide. And if you have a high DPI screen, uh, the 400 pixel uh, image would be loaded. And in this case, uh, the, the image would also be sharp on, on this, um, yeah, on, on the, the high DPI, DPI screen. But this is the, the only condition where you should use the 2x syntax. In all other um, cases we see later on, this syntax isn't important anymore. So as I said, this can be used, for example, for an icon or for a user avatar image, which is just the same uh, across all viewports. Uh, the next um, use case uh, we're going to look at is probably the, the most common one. This is where you have the same image file with the same aspect ratio as we saw before, just in, in different sizes. Um, uh, and uh, it's just scaled. For example, on the mobile uh, mobile devices, it's it's much smaller than on a big screen. So, uh, but it's just, uh, it's still the same image. In this case, you use, uh, as I uh, shown before, uh, source set together with sizes. Uh, this is, for example, used if you have a teaser card or if you uh, show images in columns on a website. This is just uh, the common common use case for images in uh, bigger websites. So how do you arrive at this definition? Well, the sizes definition is defined by your responsive design. How big is this image? On a mobile phone, how big uh, would this image be on a tablet device that is uh, somewhere in between? How big is this image on a very big screen? Uh, your responsive design shows these sizes, and you just have to write them down in this format where you um, define uh, uh, the the breakpoints. Let's call them breakpoints. Um, uh, and in this case, if your screen is uh, bigger than 1,100 pixels, the image would always be 500 pixels. Uh, if it's uh, bigger than uh, 700 pixels, it would be roughly the, the half of the viewport. And if it's smaller than that, it would be the whole viewport. This is a common, common case. Yeah, if you uh, define that uh, sizes query, Based on that, you um, you need to think about which sources, which image files you should provide to um, to cover this area where the uh, how how big the image can get on the site, and you could do this, or this is how I would uh, approach this by looking at each 
of the um, breakpoints you defined in the sizes query and uh, think about how big or how small the image can get in each breakpoint. And the combination of that can lead to a source set. So if we do that for this case, um, and we look at the smallest one, which is uh, which covers between zero pixels width, which is uh, the theoretical, and uh, seven um, seven hundred pixels width. This is where the next uh, breakpoint uh, happens. Uh, you would have uh, image files between uh, zero pixels and one thousand four hundred pixels if you have a two X screen. So your if you have a one X screen, it can be between zero and 700. If you have a 2x screen, it can be uh, between 0 and uh, 1,400. And this you can do for each of these breakpoints. So for the second one, um, you have only half of the viewport. So it's uh, 350. The half of uh, 700 is your minimum image size you would have. And you can scale it up, up to 1,100 pixel, which, uh, and the half of that, uh, because 50. Um, fifty percent of the viewport, uh, you would have five hundred five hundred and fifty pixels. And if you see that for the two uh, x screen, you would double these. And for the third one, you have the same. In, in this case, it's much easier because um, it's just a fixed size. So you have uh, five hundred pixels for one um, x screens and thousand pixels for two x screens, and then you have the constraints and you have to yeah think about uh, how many images you really want to provide and then cover this area roughly so this doesn't need to be perfect but um, in this case i chose to have five uh, five images and cover the whole area uh, i i should cover and this is how you arrive at this tag I hope this is more or less clear how I approach this. Uh, this is, yeah, and uh, important to know that you don't have to be exact uh, about this because uh, every viewport is different and it's uh, from browser to browsers, it can vary if it's one pixel more, or one pixel less. And also it can vary if the window was was big before and, and was, uh, was made smaller by the user, then it's also different. So it's not important to be pixel perfect here. It's uh, just important to think about optimizing an image and to not serve a huge image to uh, smaller devices. So this is, I think, what would cover probably 70 to 80% of images out there. Um, and, but there are cases where you would want to have more control. And I want to talk about them in an advanced part. This is where the picture tag uh, comes into play. I see a lot of picture tags out there, but I don't think it makes much sense to use them everywhere because it gets even more complicated when you use picture because there are a lot more factors, a, a lot more options uh, there. And source set and sizes is usually enough to cover your use case. But if you want to use picture, I show you the use cases where it makes sense. It makes sense where you want to serve when you want to serve different aspect ratios for different viewports. For example, you want to serve a square image on mobile devices and a 16 by nine image on desktop devices because a square image would be huge in, in height and, and would not look good for your, for, for your design. So there it makes a lot of sense to use picture instead of uh, just an image tag with source set and sizes where you have a bit more control and this looks uh, something like this. This is where uh, where we see the source tag uh, that was talked about before. Um, basically, it's uh, a few image tags uh, after one another, but the image tag is not image, but source. And uh, there is one real image tag, which uh, just picks the, the current source, uh, the, 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 the data from the current source tag. And displays it. So um, the the picture tag around around it is not relevant, and the individual source tags are also never displayed. It's just the image that is displayed, 
and it picks the information from the other tags around it. So uh, in this makes, uh, for example, uh, a lot of sense if you have a hero image on the um, head of the site, uh, the, the, the case I described where, where you would want uh, um, a square image on mobile and a more wider image on desktop. Also for image sliders, uh, I think mostly it makes sense for images that get bigger. Uh, then that makes sense to think about something like this and where the complexity involved with that makes sense. So this is called also called in the standard, it's called um, art direction. And uh, with art direction, you have a real breakpoint. So this is a breakpoint that the browser has to follow. With uh, sizes, this is all optional for the browser. The op uh, browser can choose whatever uh, it wants. In this case, the browser has to switch between the mobile crop and the desktop crop at exactly 700 pixels. So if you uh, uh, scale your browser to 700 pixels, it has to load the desktop uh, image. If you scale it to seven, uh, 699, it has to load the mobile image. This is also why it's called art direction because you can define which image uh, can be loaded. And within each source tag, it's similar to before. You define sizes and you define source set and the browser can again decide uh, what, what should be picked. Yeah, and um, you just have to, to um, remember that uh, this crop, uh, the, this this hard breakpoint exists, uh, and in this case, uh, for the source tag for the mobile view, it only makes sense to think about images uh, until 700 pixels, because above 700 pixels, the other source takes over, so the desktop image will be will be picked. So for the desktop image. Um, you can think about bigger images, but the smaller images are not important for desktop image because there's a separate uh, variant of this image for uh, mobile devices. So all in all, my summary would be, um, there's no perfect image for everyone. So don't think too much about individual pixel, pixels and small optimizations, but there are a few best practices that can make it a bit easier to deal with all these image formats and sizes and croppings and so on. So I would advise to not think too much about sizes queries. It's all right if it's 50 pixels more or less, if, if your image is roughly half of the viewport, just right 50 uh, viewport width, that's all right. Uh, because uh, the other, uh, you don't have the uh, necessarily the, the perfect image in your source set to load. So it doesn't make sense to make any micro optimizations there. For the source set, I would advise to focus on the mobile side more on 2X because most mobile devices nowadays use 2X screens and it looks uh, a bit crappy if you use too small, too small images on mobile devices. And for desktop, it, more, it makes more sense to use smaller images uh, uh, to focus more on the 1X part uh, because if it's too, if the, the, the screen is too large, most people, really don't use the whole screen size, but uh, use a smaller browser window within the screen. So this can make it a bit easier to not serve 5,000 pixel images uh, to the browser that are mostly not used. Um, yeah, I would advise to just focus on the one X part there. And last but not least, I would advise to only use pic uh, picture if it really is necessary because it makes things much more complicated. You have to generate different images for different, um, yeah, different croppings of the same image. Uh, if you use, for example, a content management system uh, like Table Three, uh, you uh, uh, would the 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 editor would uh, need to have the opportunity to to. Uh, define croppings in the back end and it makes it much harder for them to to yeah to to generate the, the best content 
So if it's not necessary, just don't use it. If uh, source set and sizes is fine for your use case, just use this one. Yeah, I don't know if I made it in 10 minutes, but uh, yeah, maybe a bit more. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. Thank you. Yeah. I'm not sure something that I found that was uh, working on responsibilities for my own work. Uh, if, you, if you can go back to the slide about the exploit uh, cycles. Uh, this one? Um, no, no, no. When you show the, the um, admitted query plus pixel server side and pixel, like the attribute of the Mm. Uh, this one? Yeah, yeah, here, here. Yeah, size. And uh, the this this string with the link in it, uh, uh, one thousand hundred pixels or five hundred pixels. Yeah, it's a weird mix of media query symbols and CSS. This five hundred pixel, you can put call in there. You can put what? You can put you can put call function in there. Yeah, you could. Yeah. And then if you need to pinpoint like the, the specific width of your image on your web page, you can look at like if it's if it's uh, responsive, then it's like 500 pixels left column and the uh, 200 pixels right column and just padding. And so you can calculate the actual number without yeah. specifying the pixel. So you can write the yeah, but a very specific thing. And yeah, you, I you, you said to yeah. this. Yeah. But I think uh, it's it's important to give the browser information uh, what's what's the exact width. And uh, if you do it once and the red browser decides it's it improves for available features. Yeah, so I, I, I wouldn't care because I was really surprised because it's it's a weird news. Yeah, it means to also come with the school. Oh my. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, no, no, no. I, I think this is this is separate from CSS. It's just the same uh, units, and it's not also not all. Uh, yeah, but uh, for example, you can't use percentages there. Because yeah, uh, that's, that's why you need yeah, because percentages are relative to the element around it, and you don't know that at the moment where the image needs to be loaded. So, yeah, but I, I would still argue, yeah, you can do that, but uh, if it's only 10, 20, 30 pixels difference, I don't think it makes much sense to calculate this. <laughs> Sure. You you can do it, but uh, I, my pragmatic approach of after all these years working this, with this, especially in the context of server side rendered markup in content management systems where you don't really know where everything is and if there's a wrapper around it or something like that, um, it's fine if you just say about half of the viewport width. I also like the. Use feature elements of last resort because you can't avoid using this uh, where you display cost because it's an extra buffer and you have to do this display content or whatever. Yeah, uh, it's it's really uh, the wrong thing to do. So it's probably, but uh, when you have multiple formats, it's the only thing. I think it's yeah. the number one use case for me because. JPEG, you can you can make it smaller by thirty percent by just using the web. But you can make this one even smaller by another thirty percent by using eighty. Yeah. So it it might be worth it. Um, yeah, in this is the main use case for picture. Uh, yeah, for this case, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, this didn't really fit in the talk for the ten minute rule, but uh, yeah. But also, I, I always start with uh, just an image with source set. And only when I absolutely need it, I wrap everything with it. Yeah. If if we uh, if we're talking about details here, um, 
what's also very interesting and useful is that you can uh, you, you should of course define for every image tag a height and width not not the exact values but uh, the the aspect to 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 reserve the the space uh, inside the website uh, with the aspect ratio between that but you can also define a height and width for each source yes so um uh, that that the, the the place is reserved for for this image um yeah beforehand before everything is loaded this is also yeah yeah uh, first of all, thank you uh, for the talk. Um, yeah, I just want to say what uh, Lee said that uh, art are actually the rare use case, but uh, by looking format, so for example, you can use any media feature with a uh, source you can feature. So you could say uh, if you use to use motion, don't you could give uh, a scroll of the GIF. But rather, that's a normal use case. And also just want to point out that um, the providing different uh, sizes to the browser and let the browser update which image should you should use, which is also now what you can see is that um, using image that all yeah. browsers support yeah. them. Pretty pretty new but uh, all major browsers support image that which allows to say here's a background image with three different sizes, uh, new browser feed uh, that will get yeah. yeah. And I think don't just size the formats. And I think this is a pretty good use case where uh, it's not a good idea to micromanage the browser, but to just let the browser deal with it because the browser has more information than the developer at this point uh, in the loading cycle. So the, you, you just have to pro provide them with enough, enough options and information about these options so that the browser can make a Good, good ish decision. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're asking a bunch of developers not to micromanage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I think this is the reason why a lot of people use the picture tag because they can define which image is used in which case. But I would argue this is not a good idea in most cases. Any? Yeah. Uh, yes. So, um, do you have any recommendations for like ideas for creating container squares and configuration that we can about different variables? I think this is not a problem that is solved already because it's it's quite hard. I think because the container queries. Probably we will be calculated much later in the process. This is very early, so uh, you you I don't know if it will be possible to to maybe it it is possible, but I don't think that there are, that there are any approaches right now. It's it's always dependent on the viewport size and not on a container. So. Yeah. I think they have the radar, but it's not implemented. I'm not sure. Even if it's not possible, if you can't come in the future, I think it was more easy and better. I guess because everything may be pretty different depending on the data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, this is the problem because uh, images are usually loaded before the CSS. But if you have to wait for the CSS, yeah, then you, uh, it's it's just like like the JavaScript solutions we had before responsive images, uh, or the the data attributes that are switched to the real attributes at at a later point. This is not a good idea because the images are loaded much later in the process. Yeah. Okay, I think everyone is eating now, so I'm finished. <laughs> Thank you.